Okay, hi there, and welcome to another video. Uh, we're going to take a look at an important aspect of your macroeconomics, which is measuring development progress for emerging and developing countries in particular. So this video will take a, a detailed look at the latest figures for the Human Development Index, otherwise known as HDI. So the HDI is a composite measure of living standards. We're trying to track progress in three basic aspects, and they are a long and, a long and healthy life, knowledge, and living standards. Let's look at the details. It's important to know how each of these three dimensions are actually measured. So in terms of uh, healthy life, they take life expectancy at birth, life expectancy for a newborn infant, if prevailing patterns of age-specific mortality at the time of birth stay the same. Second aspect is knowledge. <clears throat> Here they take two measures, expected years of schooling that somebody's going to receive and the average actual years of schooling received by people aged 25 and older. And the third strand, living standards, they take a measure known as GNI, Gross National Income per capita. So that's GDP plus or minus the net property income from overseas assets. It's the national income accruing to people who live in a country. Um, converted to US dollars, then converted again to purchasing power parity, so that hopefully a thousand dollars has roughly the same purchasing power across countries, and then divide by the mid-year population to get the GNI per capita. So what do we find? We find that these are the 10 countries in 2018 with the highest, the strongest HGI performance. Norway coming top, uh, not the highest income per capita in the top 10. That belongs firmly to Singapore with a per capita income of over, over $82,000. You can see here life expectancy at birth in all countries well into the 80s. Significant um, expected years of schooling and by and large a very high per capita income. You'd expect if we go to the bottom of the rankings to see the, the chasm, the extremes here. So these are the bottom six countries of which four have a national income below $1,000 per year per capita. Look at countries like Niger and Chad, where the mean years of schooling are 2 and 2.3 years respectively, uh, where life expectancy in Niger is 60, but the other countries have a life expectancy significant below that, including Sierra Leone and the CAR, less than 53 years at birth. If you look at those extremes, you're going to get enormous differences. So here's a, another slide. I've just taken the selection of countries. Australia third, UK 14th last year with a per capita income just under $40,000 per capita. South Korea and Poland uh, reaching towards the top 20, top 30 respectively. Mexico currently outperforming China. It has a, a marginally higher per capita income. Uh, but higher years of schooling and a higher life expectancy. So their human development index, one third weighting, of course, for each is, is bigger. I just wanted to make a contrast between South Africa and Vietnam. You can see here that Vietnam has a per capita income of less than half, effectively less than half of South Africa. Yet its human development index is very close. They're just three places below. On large part, of course, because of the much lower life expectancy in in uh, South Africa compared to Vietnam. Indeed, Vietnam has a life expectancy approaching 77 years, which is similar to that of Mexico and Poland. Interestingly, that uh, India, which has a higher per capita income than Vietnam, if you look at the bottom right hand of the right hand side of this table, India's per capita income three thousand three hundred fifty three dollars, well ahead of Vietnam, but yet they're fourteen places lower on HDI. Fewer years of, ex of schooling expected and a significant gap uh, in life expectancy. So in the exam, you may well be given some data, pick out the important features, pick out sometimes the, the countries that might conceivably sh or should perhaps be stronger on HGI than they are at present. One way of doing this is to take the GNI per capita rank minus the human development rank so you take the difference in ranking by GNI per capita and by HDI. Now, in this case, the figures here are positive, 
which means that a country is better ranked by HDI than it is by GNI. Cuba comes out top significantly, uh, in large part because of the life expectancy at birth. But you can see here they're 73rd uh, on the Human Development Index. But their per capita incomes, actually, they would be down about 117, 118, if that was the case. In contrast, here are countries where their HDI ranking is significantly worse than their GNI ranking. So the standout here is Equatorial Guinea, which has a per capita income closing in on $20,000 per year, but a life expectancy below 60 and only five and a half million years of actual schooling. And again, in countries where there's a lot of oil and gas wealth that drives up the per capita national income, but doesn't necessarily translate into development progress. The obvious example to use in an exam would be Qatar hosting the next World Cup. It's got the highest per capita income in the world, $116,000 per capita, but yet it's 37th on the Human Development Index. Hasn't even broken into the top 30. So HDI is an important measure of development, particularly for emerging and developing countries. We've been through the three key dimensions of the Human Development Index. We've also outlined how each of them is measured. And then we've looked at some of the data for particular countries taken from 2018.